of all the other stuff. I'm kind of like a loyalty guy. I find my team and I stick with it. Like as bad as it is, I'm all the way for Ohio. Uh, you know, the Bengals and the Buckeyes, I don't acknowledge Cleveland, anything they got as Ohio, but they, uh, you know, so yeah, I, I like, uh, I don't know anything else outside of those kind of things I use or those products I use, but, uh, Magic Music Visualizer is is probably one of the one of the best ones that I got. That so I uh, I'm gonna go on a little very very small tangent here. He, uh, you know, I know he's got Buckeyes. Buckeyes are a really good team, but uh, 2006 Gators beat Buckeyes in basketball and football that season. Oh boy. Yeah. Hmm. I- Welcome back to Tekka Monkey Logic Podcast number seven. That's right, right? Yep. <laughs> And I'm Space Logic, and we've got Dr. Otaku hosting with us today, and we have two cool guests. And one is kind of old to the Neuroflames community, Deep Surface. If you haven't heard his name, you will soon enough. His stuff is crazy. I don't know if he's crazy, but, you know, his stuff is definitely crazy. But and look at if you look at that visual going behind him right now, it's like he's just melting into it right there. And the second guest we have is Chaz. He's new to the New Friends community, but as soon as he dropped in, he was making waves. And when I say waves, we say pirates, buccaneers, mermaids, whatnot. And he's big into part metal, and he does his own music too. And you got to check out his videos. Really cool stuff. Right now, he's working on a. Can I tell them? Yeah, a little bit about a uh, werewolf themed video. I kind of like he's he goes with the monsters and stuff. So you know, kind of the genre I like, of all the horror stuff. And um, so we'll when we go through, and if he wants, he can show us some of it. What he's been working on. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Otaku. You want to feel the guest a little bit? Yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, I'm excited for today's episode just because I already feel like I know everybody. Um, and honestly, just kind of want to catch up. Um, I've been a little disconnected from the socials and the discords uh, this year. I've been busy with work and everything, so I haven't been able to keep up like 100% with everybody. So... I like to just kind of go through that, you know, starting with Deep and then going over to Chez. Um, I've been a big fan of the pirate metal stuff coming out. Um, I love shanty music and um, anything that kind of falls into that folk genre. So when I started seeing those videos come out with the original music and everything, I was like losing my fucking mind. And it's really catchy music, too. Like, it's it's one thing to, like, just make music to, like, fit the genre. But then it's another thing to also make something that's like, oh, this is a hit. Like, I could I could be, like, blasting this on the Spotify playlist. No problem. <laughs> All right, so um, Deep, you want to give us a little bit of your intro, you know, in your own words, how oh, you came okay. about with the AI, what attracted you about it, and you know, I know you've been like painting and doing music from before the AI. So, what was it about it, like that, you know, kind of got you into it? And I mean, you've been really making some great stuff, whole uh, adventure of yours. Okay. Uh, I've been uh, doing, focusing on music and wanted to make some videos for them. Uh, that's from the beginning, back like 2000, back early, you know, 2013 on. But I, uh, with the AI, somebody I was in a Discord server with, and he just kept dropping these pictures from Mid Journey. This is like version two and uh, such. And uh, so I, 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 like poo-pooing it doing my own visual arts and stuff didn't want to get into it it started looking neat and then he posted this one where this wave was doing this impossible thing you know scooping over and 
all these details in there. And so I thought well, it was really good looking image. And so I started mid journey, uh, 22, September 22, I think. And, uh, did that for a couple months and had this huge stockpile. And then I, uh, quit the mid journey for a while to use all those assets I created. And then when I went back to, I was using Adobe and ran across a video for Kyber and I uh, thought, well, that'd be a lot quicker. So dove into Kyber for a six, well, actually three weeks and then, um, saw neural frames and started using it from then on back in well september this year august this year i'm sorry august yeah i know like when you actually joined your friends you were kind of like just sitting back and watching what's going on yeah you kind of didn't get into the community much uh it was much later um i think i started kind of interacting with you around november september yeah, yeah, yeah something around november there. yeah november yeah yeah, after that, I'll tell you what. Um, I will tell everybody right here and right now. He's the master of visuals, and the man knows how to talk to Suno. There's no other. There's no second. Literally. He does stuff on Suno. Like, I mean, he just put those two tracks. I'll listen to him. And I haven't given my... Uh, like uh emoji to it yet because i was waiting i was waiting i yeah i mean just for the for the record i was a i was a hardcore suno hater like i would talk shit on it all the time and then steve shut me up i haven't said shit bad about suno since <laughs> <laughs> you know i think what deep's been doing to suno and the feedback they've been getting there like you know and that's why the alpha version 3 is out now if improved <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'm a believer now. I I, I see the, the power of it. All right. The new so version will Chaz, blow you away, Taku. It's, uh, I'm going to move amazing. to you. And so the one thing is, like, me, Chaz, and Deep, we're, Deep's going to be our older brother here because he's, you know, he's just a little bit older than me, but we're kind of in the same age group. And that's what I wanted to bring the dynamics of the AI and the community I've been experiencing firsthand is a lot of my generation getting into it a lot more. And for me, just from my end point, it'd be, we were like dreamers growing up. Mm. You know, the movies, the music, everything in the 80s and the 90s, like had this magic about it. So for having this tool now, it's almost like we can translate those, you know, dreams, literally into visuals. And that's exactly what neural frames at least is. I mean, motion AI, everything, it's a little bit different, but for neural frames, it translates my thoughts into visuals. That's the best way to put it. So Chaz, tell us about a little bit about your journey into this AI advent. Yeah, so um, first I'll, I'll start, I've been listening to European rock and like pirate metal and folk metal and symphonic metal for almost um since 2016 where where a buddy of mine who was um engaged to a lady from finland was into it and got me into it so that's where my musical pace came from and ever since then i've never looked back at this from a rock music um, standpoint uh, here in the states it's pretty dry so but over there in Europe and um, in some places in Asia, it's still very active. So you can really enjoy that. Um, as for getting into AI, believe it or not, I started with MidJourney um, back in um, probably about two years ago. Um, and what I was doing with MidJourney was actually I I lead a Dungeons and Dragons game every week. Oh, nice. So. I was using Midjourney to get my pictures for my players, so I would we would build up um, like this whole module, and we would have um, I would get, make pictures so they can see um, kind of what the situation they were going into, and um, I would also make character pictures for them so they could see their characters as a picture. And about I think it was about December, um, Microsoft started. Um, 
incorporating different things like uh, chat GPT and, um, and Suno AI. And I just happened to come across the Microsoft um, AI Bing website. Right. And, and um, they said, you can make a song. So I tried it and I liked it. And that's how I got into Suno AI. And I made uh, quite a few songs, um, got, got a membership, made quite a few songs. And I said, well, I like these so much that I just want to share them. So I went on a research. Um, what was the best music video software out there? And Neuroprains was on, on the top. Give, give, give me a little bit. Uh, yeah, so, like, what was the search engine you used? Like, just straight up Google? Or did yeah, you ask Google. ChatGPT? I, okay, I Google. Google. Wow. Hey, so Nick, Nico, you got to hear this. Google's got you on top. <laughs> yeah, there were numerous articles um, uh, in Google where, there was, where you search for best music AI music video software. Wow, and, uh, that's every great. Every one had neural frames at, at the top. They had Cal Calber second. So, yeah, Kyber definitely. <laughs> nice. And, <That>. and, <laughs> and then when I looked at the pricing of everything, because I was going to make a lot of music videos, I didn't want to. Right. I mean, neural frames just blows everybody out of the water. Price price. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you said that because. Uh, this is goes credit to Nico, the best independent developer. And when I say independent, is just one guy, just one guy when he started. And when I joined, it was just him. He was the customer service, the everything. And the poor guy rolled like that for the first year and a half till he got some help. And I mean, Nico, this is, here's a proof right here. And uh, thank you, Google. Yep, and, and thank you, thank you to the journalists that put those articles out too, because they, they recognize that neuroprains was above um, everything else. I'm glad that uh, Nico's uh, neuroframes is actually getting that recognition because uh, it is such a powerful tool, and people have no idea. Like, I mean. There is a learning curve. There definitely is a learning curve because it, it's it's a literally a tool. So the more you know how to use it, the more powerful output you get from it. So yeah, and I also think that you know NeuroFrames compared to like a lot of these other tools, like it's kind of a new player in the in the world, right? It's like the new kid on the street, even though it's been out for a year. So I think it's growing more and more because of that. It's slowly getting the word out. I think the other thing is. Um, if you're really uh, an artist, and when uh, I know <clears throat> this word is heavily um, a controversy among like artists, but when I say artists is uh, using neural frames is literally an art, and I I would invite you to challenge me on that because once you use it, you'll realize if you are not an artist, you can't use it. Yeah, literally. Neuroframes. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Sorry, man. Sorry. No, I was going to say, I think neuroframes is kind of like an instrument in a way. So mm -hmm. to present your your art or your music, um, because there, there's, let's get to the chase. There's a lot of bias against AI. They think you're not doing anything, you're lazy, you're, you just type in something and something happens, right? <laughs> but they, they could be further from the truth. Um, it's, I kind of compare neuroprints to kind of like a DJ. You have to have the right mixes, the right pictures, the right prompts mm -hmm. to get your instrument to work properly to show your art. Yep. So, no, uh, and I'm just going to actually bring it to you, Chaz, that uh, when you started using it, like, I, you know, that one video, uh, Devil Inside, I saw, which, mm -hmm. which was kind of real fluid for, and what was that, the first video you made? Oh, uh, that was the fifth video I made. But fifth video, yeah. <laughs> but and it was what in the first week of joining Neuroframes, second or week. second week. Yep. So, what I saw in that video was you making that was almost as if you were in tune with you know the tool, and mm -hmm. I bring that um, example that you know like how some people are natural with some stuff like you know 
this guy will pick up a guitar and just start playing it. Just it's so natural to him, you know, the just by going over the chords and the feel, the flow. And then some have to like take lessons for mm -hmm. years, months sometimes to, you know, get the hang of just the basics. So I was very natural to the instrument. Like I actually, it just really hit the chord with me. And I saw that with your stuff too. But then where I and you ran into problems uh, were when we were specializing. When right. we went, wanted to specialize the stuff is where we realized now we actually have to fight the AI to give us what we want, you know? And when you getting into the pirate stuff, it sent you on a yes. coaster. That, and then you saw, like, you know, and, and that's one of the things that the AI is just not going to give you what you want. You have to conjure it out of it and right. find the right ways to talk to it, to give it to you. And make custom models, especially. So yeah. yeah. Deep. You do a lot of a lot of stuff. So you go I've seen your stuff from abstract to uh, a truck rolling in and hitting people in a just a serene video. I I, I mean that was awesome though. You know, you because no, you're not expecting. You're just listening to the music, and all of a sudden, yeah, you're like, "There's a truck." What was that? Yeah, yeah, it it was pretty cool. Yeah, give us some of you know your thought. Like, I know you've had to really customize some stuff to make, and tell us if it's that easy or what do you have to do. Uh, well, I mean, it's easy if you're just doing stuff, right? You get you. I did stuff, saw patterns in my your uh like mid journey stuff. Loved the art that it was creating the the patterns of environments and all that stuff. And when the Nico had the with neuroframes, when there was the you know to make custom models, you just go back to the stuff that you liked, make variations on it, combine it with stuff, and then you know to to create the. Uh, like this here, the paint world, you know, that started with just one picture that was just a wet paint picture, you know, and then, uh, so finding the, finding all that, those aspects that you like, and then being able to throw them into a program, uh, to, to animate it, you know, uh, let me, let me start over. What exactly was the question? Cause I don't know sometimes what I'm talking no, no, about. You're actually going in the your your thought pattern is right, and what I was trying to take is because um, when you showed me some of your work, especially the ones with those, uh, what do you call them, the dewberries, oh, the, the kids, bog berries? you know, the the bog, the bog berries, yeah. yeah. So yeah. because that is very customized, right? Yeah, it's, it's a whole different. You had to make a custom model for it, and yeah, yeah. you wouldn't be able to get those, you know, specialized animations just straight up you know from the engine right, right. so yeah. you had to feed it a certain number of images to get that exact you know stuff in there yep now while i'm gonna switch to Chaz, you want to bring some of your stuff up you want to share with us that way you know we can and i would actually uh encourage both of you to show us some of your stuff you guys are working on just to kind of okay. like you know walk the viewers through can I, uh, yeah, yeah. can I come into something we talked about with the like this with all this technology and stuff like you get remember flip phones and all that. It was obvious what everything did. You push a button, it turns it on. Then you got to the first smartphones and you're looking at it. You're like, if it didn't have that button on the side, you're like, what the hell the hell does this work? And that's kind of like what all this AI stuff is. Is it, It's this thing that looks nice and pretty and shiny and it can do so much, especially like with the aspects of neural frames with how you could dive in but you don't you it, you don't see it you don't know it it's futuristic you got to figure out how to open it up how to operate it get it to start responding and doing the things you know that that we are asking it to do so that's like this is a just popped in my head how the you know the confusion with apple and all that with you know going from flip phones to apple or android uh that's kind of yeah. like what what we have here 
Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's been a it's been a huge upgrade. But one of the one of the things I wanted to bring up with you, Deep, um, and I think the audience who's tuning in is going to appreciate this because at least for my channel, a lot of the people who follow me are also musicians and stuff. Yeah. And um, one of the things that I've talked to you about in private that I think is super interesting is like your mindset when it comes to the music making process, as well as tying it into neural frames. And what I'm talking about specifically is what you were telling me about even before like the Suno stuff started getting entered into the equation, but like the randomizers and stuff you would use on your your morgue boards and things like that. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Yeah. Um, and like the concept of like having those random uh, modulators within your doll, right? And kind of doing those type of things to see what outcomes come out musically, just audio. Right. And now you're kind of taking that mindset that you've been like refining for the last few years into yeah. neural frames. Did you want to like kind of explain that a little bit more sophisticated than I did? Because sure. I think people would really be interested in that. Yeah, we like when you talk. We talked about it. It started back like going into the doll, the, the digital audio workstation, and taking a sound and if it's a one second sound expanding it down to uh you know a, a minute or two minutes long and so you have all these art artifacts in there and there's math going on with all this artifact stuff and so you get these characteristics that are there and like i couldn't have i could have tried to make all these sounds chain together like that uh but uh if you you know it's it's tedious as hell but if you do some random stuff you get you can emulate all these things that happen because of the math of the digital doing it or audio, you know, if analog, you have a little different effect by doing stuff to it in analog space. But uh, anyways, I, I love the randomness of stuff. It's never, you're never going to hear it again. It's never, uh, you know, you don't sit there. You can sit there and practice forever to try to get something, or you can enjoy what's there and shape and mold it. And, you know, with what actually occurs. So I started with random MIDI generators uh and would just make a song without even listening to it uh, just to see what it spit out and you know uh have fun with that but yeah the the whole thing with the randomness is is uh it, it, you, you know you start to see patterns even though it is random there's not truly random when we're making it so you get these patterns that develop and if you recognize what computers or these machines are doing with the patterns and you could you know just like with practice and stuff, it's a weird way of practicing without thinking about doing it. You know, you've uh, you sort of see, sort of see how you could tweak things minutely, not big sweeping changes, but you can start tweaking it into the directions you want to go. It's like driving a car, where sometimes you're going like this and the wheels are barely turning, and sometimes you're going like this and the wheels are going crazy. You know, you got to just find that comfortable zone with the with with all, all the models like in neural frames the same deal the models are some mm -hmm. that you could drive it one way and the other way the others that if you try try to do that it's just gonna keep going straight even though you're turning the wheel as much as you can is so the but the randomness is it's it's random in a sense i what well, with the visualizers it's random where you're kind of like getting it to be so confused that you just want to see what it's spitting out making out of the nonsense you give it you know, like feeding the GPT five words and saying to come up with a different thing that's completely outside the context of those words, you know, like make a song out of things that are just if and the or, you know, to just come up with a concept that doesn't make any sense and make the computer do it anyways. And so it's kind of it's kind of torturing the AI overlords uh, predecessors, you know. It's also like in the parallel of how it all works visually in neural frames and how you're doing the same thing, but from an audio standpoint, it's it's endlessly fascinating to me because I don't know how intentional this stuff was. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think this was the concept when all this stuff started coming out. So to kind of see oh, it no. develop this way is crazy. My perspective on this, I'm a developer as a profession. And the way I see these prompts for Suno AI, for neural frames and stuff, it's kind of like a programming language in a way, where you're learning how to communicate in a language, get the computer to do what you want it to do, or to display what you want it to do. Um, and by taking that concept, just understanding that you're dealing with a computer, the computer wants certain inputs to get what you want as the output. Um, that really has helped with my prompts and stuff. So. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean you could definitely establish like a like a framework, right? Like when you're coding and stuff. Because I, I work on like video game development just as like a personal project thing, right? 
But mm -hmm. when I'm dealing with the AI, and I, I use that mindset when I'm doing AI things, and when I'm doing music even, I kind of have like a coding mindset behind it. But the, the it, I don't know, man, there's like a ghost in the machine, cause sort of, you know, there's things that happen, especially when you push it weird, like how deep it does. It's like, who the hell, like, how is this programmed? Like, I, <laughs> like, maybe I'm just not smart enough to know, but I'm like, this is fucking nuts. I, I just call that being very talented. No, no, I agree. I agree. I agree with what you just said. I, I actually, I'm thinking. I was thinking the next uh, or something soon enough. Uh, my title of the video is going to be "Deep's Torture of the Robots." 